It's now time for level four of Google's cross-site scripting, AKA XSS game. Now this level four is called Context Matters, and the description is, every bit of user supplied data must be correctly escaped for the context of the page in which it will appear. This level shows why. And the objective is, inject a script to pop up a JavaScript alert in the application. So right off the bat, we're not getting a lot of information from the description and the objective compared to the previous challenges. However, it does say every bit of user supply data must be correctly escaped for the context in the page in which it will appear. So that tells me there's going to be some type of validation. and We have to correctly bypass this validation to get script execution in the form of cross-site scripting. So as you can see here, we have this application and it has a value inside of an input box, looks like an integer. If we click create timer, we get a new page. And in a couple seconds, we get a JavaScript alert telling us when the time is up. Now there's two things that this could mean. One, this could be a single page application where the state of the DOM right here is actually determined by some JavaScript variable. In other words, this loading spinner occurs when some JavaScript switches on and then uh, it, it gets removed when the JavaScript switches off. On the other hand, it could be more like a traditional set of web pages where there's actually two pages and the server, the server renders this page, sends it back to the client, or you know the server actually just generates some HTML and sends it back to the client. So let's try to figure out which one of those it is. So if we open up the developer tools again, we go to the network tab, we click create timer, we can see right here we have a HTTP GET request. It has a string query parameter and that is called timer and has a value of three. And in the response, we can see we got some type of HTML. And it looks like this HTML is probably whatever's running right here. So it's actually a two page application. Now inside this HTML, we can see there's an image tag here. And um, when the image tag loads, it will run this start timer function. The start timer function being defined in this script block. Inside of the start timer function, it takes a parameter seconds, attempts to run parse int against that, and if that fails, returns three. This tells me it's unlikely that we'll get script execution inside of the start timer function because we'd have to be able to get our HTML or our JavaScript code past the parse int function, and in most cases, it's just going to default to three. So, really, where we want to look as a cross site scripting sync is this on load function. First thing that comes to mind is trying to add a parenthesis or sorry. The first thing that comes to my mind is trying to add an apostrophe to escape out of this start timer function and add another function call in the onload block. So let's try that. So here we can see we get a new response. However, the apostrophe we added is filtered. It's uh, filtered using some type of filtering mechanism that converts the apostrophe into HTML entity encoding. It leaves the three there at the beginning, but the apostrophe is of no use to us anymore. So we're not going to be able to use that to successfully escape this function. However, it does look like there's a parenthesis here and a semicolon, and we might be able to add another parenthesis and another semicolon, and then try to call a function like an alert. So let's head back here and let's give that a shot. Now, if we jump down to the developer tools and we look at the most recent call, we can actually see here that the parenthesis was not filtered, neither was the semicolon. And so the alert function is actually pretty close to being executable. This is a really good step in the right direction. The next thing we might want to do is just try to close off the apostrophe and maybe even add a string and see what happens. There we go. So we were successfully able to escape the validation on the server because the server performed HTML entity encoding on the apostrophe, but it did not perform HTML entity encoding on the parenthesis nor on the semicolon. 
now on an onload function as long as we have a full function call followed by a semicolon we can provide another function call in this case we were able to provide an alert function and as a result of that we end up with cross-site scripting script, script execution from within the image onload attribute